So first question is dropping the chat box is who would you win? Who would win a hundred meter sprint? Usain Bolt, Peregrine Falcon or a cheetah? Just for a bit of fun, either open your mic or drop it into the chat box. Who do you think would win a hundred meter sprint? Marley's in there, cheetah, cheetah, Vulcan, Brett, Chloe, Falcon, Vulcan, Peregrine Falcon. You're saying Bolt's not getting a lot of uh, traction. Oh, you're saying all that hard work he's put in. Pull the hamstring. <laughs> Bolt. Oh, I like you, Kieran. Yes, Bolt. Only one who knows the rules and start signals. That is brilliant. Nobody has ever come back with that. I've done this a few times. Um, I've also done one with uh, like who would win at darts as well and uh, nobody's come back with that so that's fantastic always nice to have something different well done good thinking okay so it's only a bit of fun uh, there's no sort of real answer it's just to better get you interaction um and uh just to help with, with the session going forward as well so thanks for answering that as we go uh, as we move through so um, again, onto the chat boxes or open your mics. What are multi skills? So, in your terminology, in your thoughts or um, the experience that you've had, just drop in there is what are multi skills? You can bullet point it, you can put it into a, a sentence, total it to you. Just add first off the, uh, the mark. Fundamental movement skills, fundamental movement skills that build the foundation for sports. Oh, yeah. Anybody else? If you want to open your mics as well, you're more than welcome just to, to drop in. Um, don't be afraid um, about your comments. It's all about understanding um, what we need to do. Skills that we transferred, yeah. Develop to basic skills. <coughs> yeah, transferred. Brilliant. Foundations there for sports, development of basic skills in different sports, transferable, all on the right lines, developing ABCs, transferring to Berkeley up. Some good knowledge out there of multi skills already. Um, you may have had the training with your franchise or you've been on one of the, the workshops or the qualifications um, to, to get this knowledge, which is really important. It's, it's, it's something that um, for me, every coach is working, doesn't matter whether it's in school or in sports. Um, should have this knowledge of uh, of multi skills. Yeah, Kieran. Yep. Yeah. Transferable skills learned at a foundation level to be used in a variety of sports. Yeah, it's good. So, um, I was talking to Darren uh, about this last night, um, and it, the um, Dave, uh, Professor David Morley, or Dr. David Morley, is actually somebody that Darren's worked with uh, with the fo uh, rugby football league, um, so he knew them. But the, the terminology of what multi-skills are is a highly effective approach that counteracts early specialism into sport. So Morley did this uh, research in 2010, and it provides those involved with a variety of skills that can prolong involvement in sport. That's really important when we think about this. Um, as coaches working in Key Stage 1, Key Stage 2, um, or EYS, FC, uh, FS, is what we need to know is that uh, um, children, we, they don't know what sport they want to play yet. I haven't got a clue because they haven't been opened up to, to a lot of sports. So if we, if we get um, them working on tennis all the time or football or netball all the time, actually we can have a, an imbalance of muscles and a repetitive strain as well. So we can actually do a lot of harm or injury. Um, and they won't get the, the basic skills um, of being able to transfer them, as you quite rightly said, into to a number of sports. So we have to make sure uh, early specialism, um, getting into the multi skills is really important. So Michael Owen um, made this statement um, a number of years ago, and I think it's really good, and that's why I put it in here. You can't be a good footballer and, and average everything else. Running, jumping, throwing, catching, and general skills that you put little thought into all add up into what you take to the field. Coordination and balance are vital tools to possess in most sports, and these skills should 
sometimes unknowingly being drained into us at an early age. Just again, putting in the chat room, open your mics. What do you think to that statement? Do you agree? Do you disagree? I'll leave it on the screen. Do you agree or disagree with that statement? And everybody will have their opinion. Sports is something that has a, a variety of opinions how things should be done. Harry, agree. George, you agree. Heather, yeah, 100%. Shazab. Marley. Everybody's coming through and agreeing. It is a really good quote, and I say it's, it's, it's one that um, you know, I wanted to put into here just to, to, to reiterate, uh, reiterate how important multi skills are. Joe, interesting. Can I ask um, that's why? Do you disagree? Um, it's great and, and Kieran as well why you disagree this is brilliant because this this is always nice to hear um, different varying views so if, if you want to jump on or into the chat box Joe or Kieran why why you disagree do you want to say anything give me a thumbs up or thumbs down if you wanted to say something I'll come back to it if you do. It's not a problem. Um, okay, Kieran, take into account disability sports and impairments that could affect skills. Okay, interesting thought. Um, would you be happy just to open the mic up so we, we could sort of discuss that through further, which might be a bit of a challenge on chat? Hello. Hi, Kieran, you all right? Not too bad, thank you. Good. Um, great challenge. Love it. So did you want to expand on it, what your thoughts and experience are with that? Um, yeah. So, for example, um, I've worked in a special education, educational needs school before, um, yeah. like previous to this, to this job. It was when I was at uni. And yeah. um, there's plenty of children that are more than capable to perform, like the running, the jumping, the throwing and catching as a whole. But then there's yeah. also a few kids that, for example are in wheelchairs um but when they're playing um like a, a disability level basketball they're still just as capable at the throwing and catching kind of skills although they're unable to jump and run but they yep. could still be levels above in terms of their basketball skills because of the multi skills they've learned yep i think you're right on that one um so yeah, they might not be running around jumping, but their 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 ability levels, uh, whether that be with wheelchair rugby or uh, sitting volleyball, badminton, um, basketball, you're absolutely right. They're multi school levels for, for for throwing and catching um, are, are just as equal, if not better, um, within that environment. So yeah, definitely, yeah, it's good good shout. Um, really appreciate that. So thanks, Kim. No worries. What I've also put together here is, um, and again, I'd like your input on this, and, and um, are you going to open the mics or the chat? I wanted to talk to the, the top 10 benefits of multi-skills coaching. Um, so when I thought about this, this topic of the theory behind multi-skills, the practical workshops and the practical courses are absolutely fantastic. Um, and they go into some theory, but as quite rightly, we, we look at the practical elements of, of delivery of multi-skills. So I wanted to give you actually why why we do it, um, not how we do it, but why we do it, um, which is also um, a key uh, knowledge um, to what you, why you deliver it. And I think that's something that we should think about in every session that we do. Um, why? Why are we doing it? And it's one word question to ask yourself. Um, if you don't know why you're doing it, then what, what, what's the point of doing it? Um, so there's got to be a reason behind that. And it's the same with multi-skills. What are the benefits of doing the multi-skills? So number one, it increases long-term participation in sport. Making children aware that many different physical requirements of playing sports and physical activity may lead them to take responsibility for their own physical development and preparation as they get older. So if children are aware of what they can do, how they can do it, what their success rate is, uh, what their abilities are, um, they're probably going to be uh, more engaged in sport going forward because they feel a lot more confident. And that's what we're looking for, that long-term engagement within sport and activity um, for, for the world, really, not just for the UK, but for the world. 
Number two, it transfers ability to other sports. Um, you know, you've you've mentioned that within the chat, um, and we've we've just spoken about that on the first slide. Um, the physical skills, decision making ability, and other positive attributes can be developed through multi skills coaching. So, if you are delivering a multi skills um, course or it's part of the um, curriculum that you're doing, think about it. Actually, what what you are doing is giving them the foundations, the benefit to to enjoy and progress into other sports um, and there's nothing better than that knowing that you've had that effect um, on the younger generation to to maintain that ability to enjoy sport engage in sport um, long long after you probably um, finish coaching there's another research part here as well and, and you know i'll come back to research it's it just proves and it backs up why we do stuff um, and i could like say there's got to be that why we do things that we do um, and the research will then will back that up so research into sports specific practice and the development of expert uh, expert decision making in team ball sports this was done by uh, baker coach uh, abernethy in 23rd uh, 2003 what it found was a positive relationship between players achieving expert performance in their main sport and the amount of time they had spent playing a variety of other sports um, and as coaches, you might already experience this. I know I've experienced it with, with, with my, my world of football. Um, and I also uh, do some work for the FA as well. Is um, You'll get players and children say, I only play uh, football. Their parents might just um, push them into one sport. Um, and that's what they want because they think they're going to be successful into that. And what we've got to remember is it's, it's that variety of sports that actually enriches them in what they do. Um, I, I um, got uh, into a heated debate, I would say, with some parents uh, when I used to manage a youth team for a reasonably high level uh, club. And I, uh, I took them to netball training and the parents said to me, why are you doing that? Um, we came here to play football, uh, not to play netball. Um, but it's that, that movement, that pattern, that appreciation of space and awareness, um, communication that they were learning about the transferable sport as well, um, which is, again, um, valuable in the lessons across and over with different sports. Um, I just recently took um, the Suffolk FA um, Academy coaches um, to England hockey um, to understand how they train, what they do, um, working with a cross-sport environment. Um, they got so much benefit from it. Um, and we've got to realise that it's not a problem um, to, to work in cross-sport and gain benefit from, from different areas. So many young children don't know what um, sport they like, as I said before, um, or what they want to do. A variety of young children with a solid foundation in movement skills will help them transfer their abilities to other sports in the future. Um, again, if you look at a lot of famous um, people, um, so Gary Lineker was one, uh, was very, uh, very good at cricket, had no intention of going into football, um, but those transferable skills that he's learned at a young age and across sports allowed him to transfer. Number three, improved sporting performance. So that improved fundamentals of movement, such as running, um, mechanics, quicker de uh, direction changes. Um, and it gives a stable base for improved performance in almost every sport in the long, in the long run. So multi-skill sessions can develop flexibility, core stability, strength, stamina, and power. And again, uh, I keep saying it, but if you're if you're not looking at that when you deliver a session, and you just go, and, I'm just going to put on um, a multi-sport session. So they're going to use uh, equipment that might not be related to that sport, um, just to give them an advantage and, and think about it. But again, why are you doing it? What are you trying to develop? And what are you trying to improve? Um, and again, looking back at biographies of many elite sports providers, uh, multi-schools background, um, often through a combination of informal structured play. Um, and that's the other thing to bear in mind. Um, informal, again, um, and sometimes unstructured play, so allowing them to be creative and do what they want um, can be uh, really sort of beneficial for them. Um, they learn different routes, different uh, ways of, of creating and getting over challenges as well. Number four, creates a healthier nation. So multi-skills coaching can play a role in ensuring that health agenda is being met. 
So how many of you, if you look at the chat box again or open your mics, how many of you actually thought that multi-skills coaching had a role in ensuring that the, the health agenda is being met? And if you think about Duncan's presentation before and we think about the healthier nation work we're trying to improve, um, how many of you actually thought that multi-skills had an impact on that? Just drop that in the chat box or um, again, open the mics. How many of you actually thought that multi-skills um, actually met the health agenda? Anybody want to, uh, to issue on that one? If not, again, I'll pick it up uh, later on. It's not a problem whatsoever. I think you're all a little bit quiet this morning. Um, but again, if you've got any questions. Um, Harry, I thought it was more focused on basic skills and want to keep children active and healthy. And yeah, and that's the thing, Harry, and that's why when we looked at this, I looked at this healthy, um, the theory behind multi-skills, I wanted to give you the other benefits of multi-skills um, as well. And Kieran is the same, it just seems it's all sporting participation. Um, all sport, sporting particip participation does um, improve health, exactly, but multi-skills, if they got involved with multi-skills, we look at that long-term benefit, as we said from the research, that it'd be more likely to be involved um, longer um, if they have their multi-skills or cross-sports um, participation and exposure. Number five, develops valuable life skills, problem-solving, communication, team working and working independently. You're probably doing a lot of that already within your challenges of your um, of your session plans, allowing challenges, allowing the children to think um, how they can um, get over obstacles, um, how they can reach the goal, um, whatever that may be, you're getting a ball across in different ways. Um, definitely those, those challenges there. But again, they're all part of, of um, that life building skills. Um, when we get older, we will have to think differently in creativity, um, in creative in what we do. You think about going to a, um, it, it sounds weird, but if you're going for a job interview, you're going for a job, you want to be better than the other people are there. So you have to think creative. And if you haven't had that opportunity or supposed to think creative with it, within the physical activity or sport environment, then you're not obviously going to always be uh, creative within your mind um, in the opportunities that will arise in other situations. Um, including multi-skill activity in a session will increase the likelihood of all, all participants developing all these skills, definitely. Think of the challenges, think of how they go. Don't, don't always uh, solve them for them. Um, with the multi-skills activities, how can they do stuff? How can they come up with a game? Get them to come up with a game. Just put some, a range of equipment out there and, and ask them to come up with a game um, and see what they come up with and see what they do. Um, as I said before, number six, injury prevention. Multi-skill sessions can reduce the risk of injuries and such a repetitive strain, which I said, and imbalancing muscular development. So if we're always um, kicking a ball with our right uh, leg, right foot, then we're going to have an imbalance. But by having that cross-sport and the multi-skills activity, looking at balance, agility and coordination, um, we, we're going to uh, reduce that risk. Duncan again said this within um, his um, presentation about the, the benefit of um, academic attainment um, and behaviour reduction as well. So we know that multi-skills and sport in general, but we're talking about multi-skills as, as a whole here, improves academic performance. So a review of 50 studies, again, I go back to research, which I wanted to back that up. Um, that examined the effect of school-based physical activity on academic performance. It was done within the States, um, but it found varied physical activity can improve attention span and concentration, classroom behaviour and achievement test scores. And I think, you know, if we talk about the benefits of physical activity for health, and you're probably fully aware that it has some benefit um, within the classroom. But when you've got research studies that show that um, physical activity um, can improve attention span and concentration, behaviour and achievement. You know, the, what you do um, outside the classroom, you affect inside the classroom. Um, so your positive nature, the games that you play, skills you put on, the challenges you do, the activity and the engagement with children, um, 
really has an improvement uh, on their ability within the classroom. So well done for that. We talked about, I think Kieran talked about inclusion, absolutely right, multi-skills um, activities, coaches can ensure there's an opportunity for the less dominant players to achieve success. Because it's not totally sports-based, we can mix games up with, um, with multi-skills, they don't have to use sporting equipment that's related to, to that sport, we look for them to, to challenge it in different ways. It allows an opportunity for other people to get involved um, in what we do and achieve success. And the STEP model is really good for that uh, as well. So space, task, equipment and people. Um, if we use a STEP model, um, we can then include um, uh, all variety of abilities within our, within our, um, our sessions. Last couple, and then we're going to get you to do some, uh, some more work. So number nine, it re-engaged people no longer playing sport. So, yeah, we talk about multi-sports and multi-skills, I would say, um, into the early years, key stage one to key stage two. And by the time they're going to key stage three, we are looking at sports specifics. Um, but a multi-sports approach can re-engage uh, through the research that was, that's been done um, 16 to 25-year-olds 20 year again. So the ones that drop out of sport may be um, key stage three, key stage four, because actually they don't really enjoy the sport that much or it, they, they, tie, they tend to take a different route. So a multi-sports approach can also re-engage those at that level. So we need to think broader um, when we talk about multi-skills. Um, so they recognise the multiple benefits of running multiple sports sessions. These include offering more variety, introducing new sports, more fun and less boredom, thereby attracting and retaining more participants. So, uh, again, it's going back to that point, uh, 16, 25 year olds, we think we should be putting on sports specific sessions. Um, but actually, um, if we're re-engaging them, they, they probably don't want that. They probably just want to have some fun um, running around, playing dishes and domes or, you know, using balloons or whatever it may be um, and being creative and, and, and trying something different because they've dropped out of sport, because they have fallen out of love with sport or there's been a bad experience for them. So there's no point redoing it, really trying to reinvent the wheel. Let's get them involved in some fun activities. So multi-skill is, is brilliant for that. And the last point, develops the whole person. Remember that you coach children, not just your sport. Um, really important um, is the fact that the people in front of you are all individuals. Um, and they've got different needs, different abilities um, and a different thought process on what they want to achieve. Um, so it's not about your sport. It's not about you. It's about the person that's in front of you. So using a multi skills approach to truly develop multiple uh, multiple uh, skills, develop social and lifestyle skills, as well as physical and sports skills. Multi skills coaching develops competence, confidence, connection, creativity, character and caring. So the C system that we talk about. Uh, a multi-skilled athlete should be a multi-skilled person. So they're the top 10 tips um, for, for multi-skills. Any, any thoughts or questions? I know we've been quiet this morning um, on the chat box and on the mics, um, but if you have got any thoughts and questions on those top tips, um, it has gone a lot deeper than just uh, an activity, looking at the whole person, holistic view um, on what we do. Ed, that's brilliant. When I was at school, we did math lessons by doing multi-skills activities. That's superb. And if you want to expand on that, Heather, um, please do. Um, you're more than welcome to come on to chat. I'll put it into the chat box. But if you don't wish to and you just want to leave it as that, I have no problem. But I think that shows a real positive cross-curricular link um, on what multi-skills can do. OK. Um, what I'd like you to do, if we can, if not, I, I will run through them, but hopefully you will have some input onto these. Um, there's a few people uh, on the chat box, but very, very, very few. Um, we're going to go to stabilisation, object control and locomotion. Can you put in the chat box or on, on opening up the mics, what actions come under stabilisation? So um, if you've done a multi-skills course recently, you will know this. So what actions come under stabilisation? I'll help you out. Things like stabilisation are, are, the, are the balancing type of actions, so turning, 
twist him. Anybody want to add any more? If not, it's going to be a really short session. Anybody want to do it? If you don't, I will just list them out. It does get a bit boring for you on the other side, Dave. You just listen to my voice uh, all the time. But I totally appreciate as well if you don't want to jump on. Landing after a jump. Harry, thanks for, uh, for getting involved. Hero. Yeah, landing after a jump. Yeah, definitely the balance. So landing's in there with stabilisation. And again, if you think oh, about um, stripping each action that. back. Standing on one leg. Yep. Yeah. Thanks, George. Um, strip down those actions. So when you throw a ball, actually, what are all the components of throwing a ball? There's a lot more to throwing a ball than, than just picking it up and moving your arm. So I'm going to give you another 30 seconds. We've had a few come in. Um, and then I'll just run through them. Body shape, Chloe, yep. That's in there. We've got flexing, extending, stretching, rotations. So I'll jump through a few. Uh, while I'm doing that, the next one's going to be object uh, control, manipulation of an object, orientation. So can you start to think about those? And I will just read out some more stabilization ones for you. So stabilization, uh, within that list, we're looking at turning, twisting, bending, landing, stretching, hanging, branching, rotation, tucking, as just a few of the actions we can do. Yeah, Kieran, brilliant. Bending legs, impact absorption, yes. Really important part to teach to children is that. So object control, we're going to move on to that. If my dynamic group can can stay on and uh, and, and keep throwing some, some information to the chat box, that would be brilliant. So um, object control or object, object manipulation. Um, as they call it now, is, is things like, yeah, Heather, pushing, rolling object, definitely. So we've got pushing, we've got catching, rolling, bouncing, throwing. Harry, thank you. All correct. Chloe, George, Kieran, are you going to jump in? Because Harry and he uh, Heather have, have, have moved it forward. Um, so some other ones in there. Shazab. Utilising equipment, Shazab, came in there, look at him. All of a sudden, bounced into the group. Thanks, Shazab. Um, the other ones we've got is trapping, bouncing, dribbling, pulling, pushing. So think about, again, about um, the activities we do, cross uh, curriculum, um, and all those will come into that. So now locomotive or locomotion, what actions are involved with that when we talk about that? Are oh, the dream team going to uh, turn and put it out of the bag again? Kieran, here we go. Running, jumping, leaping. Shazab running, yeah. So locomotion is any sort of movement type um, activity or, or action. Rolling. Travelling movement, yeah. Good stuff. Shazab skipping. Harry skipping, hopping, Heather traveling. Dream team again. Thank you very much. Um, so, yeah, agility work, sidestepping. Oh, Hugh and Laura. Got some, got some, uh, some new faces, or not faces, as the case may be, into, into the group. Thanks for that. Sidestepping, Laura, yeah. Harry lunging, big steps. Yes, lunges in there. And we've got to be creative in what we do. Um, how we put these stabilization, object control, control and locomotion um, into a fun activity um, for the children. So um, the dream team and the new members of the dream team, can you come up with a way that can be creative for children to go through all of these different motions and actions within a, a lesson? How would you do it? Dance routines, Kieran, lovely. This is about coaches being creative. So 
That's my other members of our dream team, Kieran. Here we go, Brett. Invasion games, obstacle courses, yep. Chloe, don't do elastic between between piece of equipment, yes. There's a really, really simple one, which I love. Um, circuits, Dan. Um, yep, striking wheels from Quizman. Floor is lava, gymnastics, yes. That's what I was going for, uh, Laura. Um, the one that I use, um, and again, you have to have a bit of a creative mind, is storytelling. Um, so you can get the children using their imagination um, and you, you're the narrator of a story um, and, and get them going through a jungle, um, you know, running, running uh, through the woods. So they have to use agility side. They've got to um, go over the lily pads. So they've got to jump or hop. Um, they've been chased by tigers. Um, so it's got to run really quick. So, you know, they're going through thick mud. So they're doing that lunging walk, big steps. Um, so, you know, you use your imagination. You can go through a lot of these actions with the children um, and be creative as well. So that's really important. Playing cone and dish, but they're rolling the ball, jumping the cones. Yeah, Heather. I have said it many times. The, the imagination and creative play is usually limited by the coach or the people um, that are involved. Um, so, you know, the more that we can be creative, the more ideas we come up with, the better. Just a quick one, the last one. Um, what um, coming to the, the ABCs, Agility, Balance and Coordination. So you can throw anyone out that you like into the chat room. Capture the flag, Harry. Yes, just going back to that one. Different equipment, different rules. Yeah. Flag could be a ball or bean bag. Yeah, balloons are really good. Obviously, some children don't like balloons. We're allergic to balloons, so be careful. But balloons are fantastic kit to, to have in your in your bag. So moving on, because I'm just conscious of time. Um, can you then get all open your mic, drop in the uh, chat box again, Dream Team, uh, and the new members of the Dream Team? Can you drop in there? What is agility? Um, what could be put into agility? So games that you might use for agility. Uh, what games or actions would you use for balance and what games or actions would you use for coordination? So we well, looking at the games or the activities you would use for the ABC. Yeah, my agility change in direction and speed. Obstacle course, brilliant. Agility shuttle runs, races. Yeah. Kieran. Kieran, you want to roll this morning. Did you wait a bit? Races. <laughs> That's all right, mate. No worries. <laughs> all done for agility. Yeah, a sharps and minnows, I think, as we call it as well. We've got so many different names. It's the same game, but different name. Cross the river, Hugh. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, crossing the river. Agility, dodgeball, balance, gymnastics. Shazab. Thanks, Shazab. Yeah, coordination, fielding. As I've got some here. The other ones that I, I don't know if anybody's been on a, um, a fencing course uh, with me. But one of the warm ups that I like. Thanks, Heather. Moving the ball around the body coordination. Yes. Um, one of the games that I like when I do the um, uh, fencing course is a mirrors game. It's a really good reaction game. Um, so one of these a mirror, um, uh, the reflection, and the other person is standing in front of them. So you just got to follow their movements. Um, and that's a really uh, good reaction game. A lot of fun as well. Kids love it and adults love it. Um, so, yeah, some really good thoughts and ideas. I am going to finish in about three minutes, uh, people. This this is a video just to finish off for you to watch. Oh, Chloe, Kieran, could you go down the route of doing agility test exercise? Um, for young children, I have key stage one, key stage two, key stage one, definitely. It depends on what context you use it, Kieran. Um, Tess, we have done um, when I worked for public health in Suffolk. Um, we did. They asked us actually commissioned us to look at tests within Key Stage Two in schools in Suffolk, um, but we put it in a way that it wasn't seen as um, you know who who was better, who was worse. So it depends the context you use it in, Kieran, um, and how you use that data as well. What you're trying to achieve from that. Um, Chloe, adaptions of games to adjust. Yeah, Robin Hood, brilliant way of uh, adaptions. Um, and you can do things like with those, I don't know whether you've done them, uh, Chloe, but different ways of traveling to go and get the equipment and travel back. Um, 
and when they go and steal or what equipment they've got if you've got anything yellow you get two points um, so things like that is is really good so i'm going to play this video to, to finish out um it's about three minutes long um and it's from uh, sports scotland uh, and it just covers the multi skills and what it's about um and hopefully just summarizes everything we talked about and it does talk about the course and the qualification um, but we are talking about uh, Sports Scotland, so don't take into consideration that, that that's going to be um, something that we're going to do um, in, in the next couple of weeks. So I think what I've got to do, just quickly do that, people, is I need to just press that and then you can hear. Welcome to this short guide to Sports Scotland's introduction to multi-skills in sport workshop. It'll give you an outline of what the three-hour workshop covers and what you can expect to take away at the end. This is a useful workshop if you're just getting started in coaching or going through training and you're working with children. It's interactive and focused on giving you practical knowledge and ideas you can use right away. By the end, you'll understand how sports coaching works as part of holistic child development. You'll learn about positive youth development, which aims to develop traits in children and young people that help them make a positive transition to adulthood. And you'll understand the concept of multi-skills, the building blocks that help create physical confidence as well as sporting abilities. Let's look at those topics in more detail. If, as coaches, we want to work with children, it's important to understand them. Holistic child development examines how taking part in sport helps with mental, personal and social skills as well as physical, tactical and technical abilities. In a similar way, positive youth development aims to create the conditions in which children and young people can develop through sport the positive traits and behaviour that will help them on their journey to adulthood. We'll pay particular attention to the five C's the developmental outcomes we're aiming for in positive youth development. Those are competence, confidence, connection, creativity, and character and caring. All of this is within the context of multi-skills, the basic abilities that help children become confident and competent movers, as well as game players. For this module, they're separated into three categories. Fundamentals of movement, fundamental movement skills, and fundamental game skills. Fundamentals of movement includes balance, coordination, agility and speed, essentially the basics of safe and efficient movement. Fundamental movement skills develop when those basics are combined to create specific movements like kicks, jumps, throws and spins. Fundamental game skills are the concepts that maximize the chances of performing well in a game. They cover things like spacing, anticipation or tracking an opponent. So by the end of the workshop, you'll have a solid grounding in the basics of multi-skills in sport and how that contributes to child development. <laughs>